Okay, today we're going to be talking about finding the ultimate American folding blade for everyday carry. Now, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Instagram, the Patreon. Support all means a ton. So let's jump into a couple blades that I've collected and what I think of them so far. Okay, so if you're like me, you've probably been in the EDC game for a little bit of a a little while now and when I first came onto the scene there were three American there were three American knife manufacturers uh, CRK or Chris Reeve knives Rick Hinder or Hinder and Mick Strider or Strider knives um, and these three blade manufacturers represented essentially the apex the height of knife manufacturing as far as making a quality American made um, folding knife that was essentially no frills I mean you might look at the camo of this tiger stripe Strider SNG and say maybe it has some frills but ultimately you know there's not any crazy wacky serrated edges um, some of these do feature cantoed tips, but overall the handles are re relatively plain Jane. They are also all titanium frame locks and they do their titanium frame locks all differently, but they're all within reason very plain and very simple knives. And essentially the objective of each one of these companies was to make a very premium, very meticulously crafted blade or folding knife that you could hold up to a magnifying glass and inspect it you know it was very high quality there they weren't taking any kind of uh they weren't skipping anything in the process of manufacturing it was all out and their prices of course reflected that each one of these knives is well over or each one of these knives is over four hundred dollars and uh, these two are over six hundred so you know with that bearing in mind they are not cheap knives but they were meant to be very quality blades uh, designed for tasks designed for everyday carry and kind of tactical uh, environments if the need be. So with that said, now that I have finally collected them all, I have the Strider, the CRK, and the Hinderer, I thought I would talk about what I like about each one of these knives and which one might be right for a prospective person looking at each one of these brands. So the reason I have the CRK in my hand is that it is probably my number one. Now, I really do actually like the Strider and the Hinder quite a bit, but I think that CRK really mastered the simplicity. Uh, there really is no frills to this knife at all. It is a very simple design. It is a very rugged design, but overall it's very basic and uh, it just does the job very well for being a knife. And I think that ultimately, if you're picky and you're not sure which one will suit your applications, this is probably going to appeal to the broadest range or broadest spectrum of people because of its simplicity. And it's just very, uh, very nice ergonomics. It doesn't have any weird flares. You know, it doesn't really have any, you know, finger grooves or anything like that. It's just very simple. And like a lot of people say, it feels like you're holding a stick, a very expensive and titanium stick, but that really feels is really what it's like. And it is comfortable in multiple grips. If you had to push it into a tactical situation, it would be just as good or just as at, it would be just at, it'd be just as good in a tactical environment as it would be in an urban environment. Overall, the other thing that I really like about the CRK is Chris Reeve tries to push into more of that high class kind of look. So you'll notice, especially on the inlaid versions, so any of the CRK Sebenzas that have things like micarta or ebony uh, inlays, they're going to have, you know, silver, um, accents to them. They're not going to have the classic blue uh, anodized accents. So overall it's going for a very high-end kind of classy look and that just makes it really kind of stand out in a an environment if that is something that is needed or appeals to you. So it's going to, like I said, look a little bit more classy and a little bit more high-end or luxury. Now that is the CRK and like I said, 
And like I said, it's probably my number one because it just fits the most amount of roles. It's good at tactical. It's good in urban environments. It's good for uh, dressing up or, you know, uh, being in more classy or fancy environments. It is a very applicable knife that just looks great in basically any and every environment. Now let's talk about Hinder. Now Hinder is pretty well known because out of all the knife uh out of all the knife makers that we're going to talk about, or out of these three uh, knife makers, Hinderer has done probably the most collabs, especially with Kershaw and Zero Tolerance. And so this blade shape for the XM18 is probably actually not that new uh, to many people. If you've owned anything like the Kershaw Cryo, or if you've owned things uh, from Zero or from Zero Tolerance, like the Zero Tolerance ZT0566, I believe, is basically just like this knife here. So, you know, it's not as special or as remarkable. Like, if you want a CRK, there's really no way around it. You gotta buy one to get into it. But the Hinderer, you can certainly buy replicas made by reputable manufacturers for far less. Now, if you do decide to shell out the money for a real hinderer, what you can expect is a super smooth action like basically all of them. Of course, the big thing with a lot of hinders is that they are flippers. So basically your striders and CRKs are not real flippers. You know, you can't really, there's no flipper tab on most of their, their designs. And they're not really meant to be that way. So aside from that, like I said, you are getting titanium, you're getting a titanium scale. And the other cool thing about hinders is that similar to the striders, they are kind of meant for you to swap scales. Now, you can get other scales for your striders, but you can easily get other scales for your hinders. And in fact, if you go on their website, you can find a litany of woods, G10s, micartas in all different types of colors. And that kind of allows you to customize the look and the feel to an extent uh, of your hinder. Now, other things that I really do like, of course, it does have premium blade steel, uh, S35VN, and really it just goes back to the manufacturing of it. Things like the ZTs and Kershaws will not be as drop shut as a real hinderer, and overall they're not going to be as smooth and refined. But I will say Hinder is probably my least favorite of the three, just because it's not a super unique design. But once again, it kind of takes that, you know, basic what a knife should be in a really good design and just refines it, you know, makes it very smooth, very clean and very precise. So in addition to that, as far as the environments, this is going to be a great EDC knife. And of course, you can easily push it into a tactical role. It does have, or this one at least features a uh, Hinderer's classic Spanto uh, tip shape. So that's basically their spear point slash tanto combination. So it gives you a good amount of strength within the tip, but also the tip has a good amount of piercing ability. So that is kind of something to factor about the hinder and the uh, design to them. Okay. Next and last, but certainly not least, is Strider. Now, the SNG is probably their most well-known, at least for everyday carry. The SMF also exists, and there are a handful of other folders like the PT that are a little bit smaller and maybe a little bit more, um, you know, if you wanted to have a dress knife, maybe the PT would work better for that. But the SNG is undoubtedly their most popular design, and they have collaborations with people like ProTech or makers, uh, like ProTech making automatic versions of the SNG. So undoubtedly, the SNG is really their uh, staple, kind of their bread and butter. Now this one here has a G10 gunner grip on it. So it is super aggressive and very, very tacky. This one also is tiger striped. So as you guys can see there, definitely this one is the most tactical of the bunch. And this is not going to be a dress style knife per se, because you have your flame anodized uh, titanium with your tiger stripe. So it's designed to look very tactical, very um, outdoors, and just overall uh, combatic or militaristic, I guess you could say. So for this one, probably going to be the least capable or the least likely to be used for a dress knife. That being said, the um, 
The Strider is really unique. It has very different ergonomics from all the others. That being said, the ergonomics are still pretty good. Um, I like to think of this knife a lot like a 1911 because especially if you put a 1911 grip right next to a Strider, they look remarkably similar. So it's kind of like holding a 1911 a little bit where if it fits you, it fits you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But overall, it is still very comfortable and it has a very large, very pronounced finger choil. So you can, you know, hold the knife as intended, you know, on on the handle, using the handle, but really most of the time you'll probably find yourself choked up on that choil because it's just very natural and almost an extension of the grip when the blade is folded out. Now, the actual cutting edge, for me, whenever I thought about striders, I thought of them being very overbuilt, very tanky, and it is true they're probably the most tanky of the knives on the list, but that does not mean that they are not sharp. This thing is very, very sharp and extremely slicey. And so I was very impressed to see uh, that even though this knife is thick, the thickest knife uh, as far as blade stock goes out of all these knives, it is the thickest, it is super slicey and very, very sharp. It is nice to see that kind of refinement in it uh, for sure. And overall, the last thing I'll say about the Strider, it is just a very distinctive design. Uh, when it comes, when it comes down to something like the uh, CRK Sabenza, you know the CRK Sabenza has very flat, very even uh, lines, and it's designed to, like I said, be kind of like a stick. Whereas the Strider, it is its own beast, and while it is very comfortable, it knows its lines and it is super distinctive. And that's probably one of the nicest things about owning a Strider is if you are in the know and you pull out a Strider, people who are in the know will automatically know that is a Strider because of its design, because of how it's made. Um, it is a very distinctive, very unique knife, but it is still very, very high quality and uh, it definitely shows through. So overall, that's what I have to say about these three knives. My number one would definitely have to be the CRK Sabenza, but truly the close second is the Strider. It really is a knife that I didn't think I would like that much, but having owned, used, and carried it, for a while now, um, I really do like it. It's quite an impressive little folder and definitely glad to have all three of them, including the Hinder. The Hinder is probably my least favorite of the bunch, but that is because it is just such a plain Jane kind of standard knife. And like I said, uh, the, I think the biggest disappointment with the Hinder is that there are budget options out there that look exactly like your $400, $450 XM18. And you know, they basically perform the same. But of course, I mean, the Hinder will perform slightly better and it is made to higher tolerances and it is ultimately a true Hinder. So it will retain its value much better than a Kershaw or zero tolerance. But that being said, that has been my kind of exploration into these three brands. And I'm still grateful and happy that I have all three of them. They are cool and they're not leaving my collection anytime soon. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.